Welcome back, ladies and gents. Today's video is a bit of a hot take, which is all the rage on tech channels in general. Now, I don't wanna to get too emotional or irate, but what this is going to be is a, a kind of an analysis or a, a summary, my thoughts, on the Microsoft Build 2020 announcements, especially as they pertain to the Linux world that we all know and love. So sit back, relax, and uh, let's unpack this together. Now, I realize that these videos are a bit of a flash in the pan in that they are, they are significant of a moment in time and as time goes on, things will become clearer and we'll kind of have more understanding of what was going on at this point in time. But Microsoft Build 2020 is a thing, it's happened or it is happening, and there's been a lot of Linux oriented news that has come out of that. I wanna to touch on some of these points and I wanna kind of speak into the space of what is Microsoft doing with their open source strategy? Um, this We're dealing with a very different company than what we were five years ago even. And the rate at which Microsoft is producing new open source projects or open sourcing old frameworks and technologies uh, is very exciting on one hand and is also a cause for concern for some on the other. Now, I don't often do this on my YouTube channel because I don't know, is it egregious? I'm not really sure, but I do want to give a shout out to, to two YouTubers in the Linux space. First of all, um, I do want to give a shout out to Jason Evangelo who just had the brilliant idea of combining Linux and coffee. If you have not checked out his show, go do that. Um, and the other person I want to give a shout out to is the Linux gamer Gardner. Um, I have been watching his videos for a long time and I think he has fantastic points. I think he's a great guy. We've never had the opportunity to interact over the internet, um, but I, I want to point you in the direction of one of his videos that he has done on um, the DirectX implementation of um, DirectX integration into the Windows subsystem for Linux. Go check out his points. He makes some really excellent points. It might seem like I'm trying to counter him in this video, especially around those points but I'm not, I'm just trying to bring a different perspective. I think he does fantastic work. So um, what I want to kind of contrast here is ultimately when it comes to some of the business decisions that I'm seeing at Microsoft is, uh, is the, the decision that they're having to, or the line they're having to walk between doing what people want and specifically what developers want, but also maintaining the business decisions that they have to do to please shareholders. Microsoft as a company, and especially since um, it's been under the leadership of Satya Nadella, has definitely made this switch to embrace open source as, as a framework of getting things done. It definitely seems genuine. They do a lot of projects now, a lot of new stuff they open source, and they're starting to open source old stuff. Yes, not everything, but it seems like they're, maybe their heart is in the right place. It's, it's kind of too early to tell, but you do have to balance the decisions of what people want and what even the people at Microsoft want, the, the developers and the talented people that work there, with the business decisions of pleasing Microsoft shareholders that ultimately determine how wealthy the company is. Now, the funny thing is, is that Microsoft as a company has become wildly more profitable uh, through Nadella and this new approach than maybe what it was before. Okay, pause that there as we move on. A common trope in the Microsoft world as it pertains to us in the open source world has been embrace, extend, and extinguish. We've heard this many times and I'm not gonna go over it here. But the question that I find myself wrestling with, with is not so much are we under threat from a company like Microsoft trying to go at open source only to bring it in, crush it, or make it better, proprietize it, and then uh, lock everyone in behind their walled garden. I don't think that's the issue here. I think the issue that Microsoft is trying to solve is who is making the apps in the Microsoft ecosystem? Well, they're developers. What tools do developers need? Okay, how can we make those tools better so that developers will continue to want to use Windows and build apps that work well in the Windows ecosystem. Now, funnily enough, that has merged with the open source world because over the last 10 to 15 years, the open source development stack has become so attractive to so many developers that as web infrastructure, 
mobile app infrastructure, and all of this other stuff is built around open source tools, Microsoft literally has no choice but to embrace open source in order to stay relevant in the developer market. Now, anecdotally speaking, there were people that would not want to work for Microsoft ever. And it was not until they started making these decisions that it started to attract the young talented developers that they need to make great stuff. Now, in my opinion, and I do have bias because I did work for Microsoft for a couple of years, not in the developer space, not in the behind the scenes space, in a very retail um, front facing uh, space, but I can genuinely see the difference between the, the ethos behind what the, the company that they were and what they are now. Now what the long game of that, it does stand to benefit Microsoft's bottom line and ultimately that's why they're making the decisions that they're making. But let's look at some of these announcements and, uh, and see where they fit into that puzzle between what developers want and how Microsoft is protecting its IP and what makes its money essentially. Okay, so let's tackle DirectX for Windows Subsystem for Linux first. Now, this one is probably the one that's copped the most uh, negative blowback because of the fact that contrary to what people seem to want, DirectX has not been open sourced and it's not being made available for bare metal Linux systems. What it is being made available for is for developers that are running the Windows subsystem for Linux on Windows 10. They want to bring in GPU accelerated APIs that can, uh, that can enhance um, the sort of development that they want to do. Now, whether that's artificial intelligence stuff or whether it's goodness knows what else, they want to, again, give developers the tools that they want to use in the environment that they want to use in it. Now, if they're already using Windows, it's just another reason for them to keep using Windows and keep building great apps for Windows. Yes, it does keep people in the Microsoft ecosystem. However, the, also the good news here is that the engineering work that is complicated, difficult, and time and money consuming that Microsoft has to put in to make DirectX work well in Windows Subsystem for Linux means that at some point, the work that they do on DirectX, the work that they do on OpenGL, OpenCL, Vulkan, which may happen sometime in the future apparently, and NVIDIA CUDA, can all benefit Linux at some point. So those developers that choose to run Linux on bare metal, eventually there will be some trickle down effect to those to help those out. Developers that have always been on Windows now just have one more reason to stay on Windows. Developers that have used Linux and still prefer it, hopefully will get some of the kickback benefits from this as well. Now, the reason that they have not in my opinion anyway, the reason that they have not gone and open source DirectX completely is because Microsoft also has a very profitable gaming business that it has to protect. And if they went ahead and open source DirectX, you can imagine the amount of potential gaming market share that could move from the Xbox and from Windows, both which revolve around DirectX, onto Linux systems. Now, Microsoft has shareholders that they have to be accountable to, and that would just seem like a poor business decision. Now, obviously from our point of view, we agree that we want to see DirectX open source because everything that is free and open source is good. And that is correct. However, I would point your attention to the fact that Canonical and Red Hat and other companies that champion open source software also have to make these same tough decisions. Some of the tools that Red Hat is famous for are tools that Red Hat controls because they have to differentiate themselves in a business marketplace. Some of the tools like snap packages that Ubuntu and Canonical push, they have to keep those in-house because they have to differentiate themselves somehow in a marketplace of crowded uh, providers. Now, Microsoft is also in that exact same space as Red Hat and as Canonical. And when it comes to the big web infrastructure, these development tools are what is going to attract developers. So they want to play in that game, they're going to have to build the tools that developers want to use. And DirectX on Windows Subsystem for Linux being one of them. Again, balancing the will of the people with the will of the shareholders. This is business. Now, other, other random thoughts here from Build 2020. Windows Package Management. Hooray, it's about time. When I saw that announcement, I was, I was very happy. I still have to use Windows in my workplace and the thought of being able to win get my way to my favorite software is really appealing. 
Now, Power Toys. The Power Toys collection of tools that are being developed for Windows predominantly are all open source and quite a few of these things, PowerShell being one of them, and other tools like VS Code and Microsoft Teams are either open sourced and available on Linux or just being made available on Linux because give the developers the tools that they want. Now on the flip side, we've also taken some Linux stuff and given it to Windows. So Windows subsystem for Linux 2, we're now gonna be able to run uh, GUI apps on Windows through WSL, WSL2. And the obviously the Bash shell uh, made its way over to Windows a few years back. There's a lot of cross-pollination going on here and that's because Microsoft sees how attractive the development toolkit is on Linux because guess what? The people that work at Microsoft are using these Linux open source based tools to build the things. Now, also interestingly, they have created a new fluid document standard, I guess, uh, that is designed to be a collaborative snippets of text anywhere and everywhere and they're editable and real time and all that fun stuff. That tech that they're developing is open source. And this is not something the Microsoft of five years ago would have even considered doing. They would have bundled it into Office, they would have made it completely locked to the Windows ecosystem, and they would have left it there. And it may or may not have flourished. However, they're making it an open source standard, they're giving developers full access to the API so that in theory, any email client or Office suite or whatever could benefit from the technological work that Microsoft's putting in here. So here's where I want to wrap this up because this video is already been very long and ranty. If you've made it this far, I appreciate you sticking with me. And as always, let me know what you think in the comments. Try and approach it from this perspective of the will of developers versus the will of the shareholders. That's kind of the theme for this video. Um, so I've heard the statement around the place that us open source users say stuff like, if Microsoft just open sourced insert name of project here, then I will trust them as a great company. The reality is that we're never going to trust a company that has, uh, that has the will of the shareholders that they are ultimately accountable to. Uh, that's just how free software works. In our core, we just can't get on board with the idea of uh, making a profit uh, off something that differentiates yourself in the marketplace and you want to keep that to yourself. That idea to us is egregious and horrible. So it is difficult for us to reconcile these things. However, I think that Microsoft has good intentions as far as they want to make life easier for developers. And this is a stark contrast to what Apple's been doing for the last few years. Now, just as a final tidbit for making it this far, here's my, here's my ultimate theory. Now, it might play into the whole embrace, extend, extinguish trope. I don't know yet, but imagine with me, if you will. Microsoft is actually already working on their own Linux distro. Uh, whether or not you knew that already uh, depends, but they're already working on their own Linux distro. They are open sourcing a lot of the tools, the new tools and new, uh, new toolkits, new frameworks that they are developing. Now on the flip side, you have Windows 10, a very legacy based, legacy laden, crumbling operating system. Would it be so crazy for Microsoft to use open standards, open source and new software development practices to build a new version of Windows based on Linux from the ground up? whether this is a custom made Linux distribution for certain devices or whether it is a full on developer friendly uh, hackathon amazing operating system built on the open source technologies that we all know and love that people pay Microsoft to use. This still benefits the open source community in the long run because you have a company with the pockets the size of Microsoft's to fund upstream open source development. Now we've already seen what can happen when a company like Intel gets behind Linux development with Clear Linux and the optimizations that's going on there. Let me wrap it up by saying this. At the end of the day, when Microsoft states that their vision is to help make businesses and people achieve more, you better believe that Canonical and Red Hat and the rest of them are up there trying to compete for people's money. But if it weren't for these big companies who are making millions of dollars and paying developers to work on their products, 
then we, the open source community, would not benefit nearly as much as what we do. Because without developers, you ain't got nothing. Conclusion, look after your developers, people, because that's the way stuff gets done. Hey, Blaine here. Thanks for checking out the Infinitely Galactic project. Look, if you want to find more videos like this, then definitely go check out the channel, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, all that good stuff, and you can chat with me on Twitter at Ingalactic. See you in the next one.